Very dangerous one at that, considering what I feel like is some pretty good competition in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's been better than expected. Yeah. Genuinely, I thought Keen or TNC would just kind of roll. I thought, uh, I'm sorry, you know, Envy slash Team Team fans, I really thought they were going to get dumpstered here. Mm -hmm. Somehow I thought Cole was going to do real well because they've been really picking up. Really? And the quals and stuff like that, they crush Team Team. Instead, they're just losing to, like, everyone. You could not have been more <laughs> wrong about that prediction. <laughs> I'll own up to it, though. I didn't even get asked, and I'll just own up to it. So you guys know that I'm uh, potentially trustworthy. Potentially. Mm -hmm. Fight over the bounty rune. The, uh, I want to talk about this Wraith King, but I want to make sure there's not going to be any action here. And sure enough, it's going to be Navi, I think. I think they should invade here. They've got a very strong kill combo with Wraith King. Blizzy. Oh, I'm not really sure. Oh. Pop out, try and snag it away. Doesn't get it. Keen Gaming will manage to get three here, but if Navi can somehow get a kill out of this, unfortunately, Crystallize is a little bit too late to the party. Blitz, we've seen a lot of Wraith King recently, uh, especially coming out of Navi in the CIS region. What is it about this hero? Mm, I'm not sure. Like, I, I genuinely want to know, like, the reasoning behind it. I heard that Team Team thinks that like the hero could be better too but I, I have i guess i have to see more games of it to see like how it's effective like it's a really good high grounder that's one thing mm. and as a team fight like low short cooldown plus it ends the game relatively early as a result of that yeah and i think he's like an above average laner in a lot of ways because you have kill potential with the stun right but the downside of the hero is like it's very easy to just get kited like i think i could i could very easily see a situation where this dp kind of just goes off. What I really like about it is that there's, um, it's like one of the rare heroes. Nice play by Kaka there. He, he tanked some of the creeps. He stopped moving. That's because he was keeping the range creep uh, on top of that, uh, the spawn area of the easy camp to just prevent Navi from being able to have that opportunity. But um, I, I feel like there's, uh, it's hard to actually get good frontliners right now in Dota, you know? Uh, there's just so much like burst damage and stuff in a lot of these team fights. It's hard to have a hero that just kind of like freely goes in. And that's why like heroes like these brewmasters and, and tide hunters, they look to be so valuable. I love that they keep just taking magicals TA. That's despite what happened much. last game. Yeah. Mm. How is this matchup then? The Death Prophet versus the TA. Um. It was okay for a while because DP never really dies. She can trade out with Spirit Siphon. Yeah. And she has a nuke that clears range creep, which I think is really important against heroes like TA. Because if TA just gets to get a free range creep deny on you repeatedly, it's really difficult. But I, I actually played DP recently because she's been out of the meta for like... Yeah, a long it's time. A while. Yeah. It's been like a year and a half or something like that. And she felt okay. I think the matchup that I played was DP versus Invoker, and that felt real good. Yeah. But uh, I can't just lie to you guys and tell you that I played DP versus TA all the time. I mean, you could make us True. look better. True. Dark comes in as a double damage, so he sees fit the opportunity to get some free harassment on Magical. Tries to get the deny in the range creep. This is a toss back here into the tiny to get the avalanche combo, but Misha still had a fairy fire, so he's gonna pop that turn, kill Kaka. He's probably gonna die blood. here, but they managed to get the first blood, and that is the important part. Crystallize once again. Is that the third time in this series? Maybe it's just two that he's managed to get the first blood. Mm -hmm. Nisha left secret for this. You really like that meme now, huh? I, like, now that they got Come me... Come on, dude, that's a low-effort really, really, one. What is it, that's like, the... That's a low-effort one. You know, the they got me in the first half thing? Yeah. They got me. Twitch chat got me. I was really confused. You know, it's low-effort, but that's, like, that's the chat. But, you know, it made me chuckle, so I'll give them a shout-out, everyone that does it. And then, you know, they'll continue to do it, because they know that I'm reading it. And it's a self-serving cycle. Mm. So, you know, you guys... Sometimes it doesn't make me laugh, but that one was okay. It was wholesome. It looks like the Death Prophet TA matchup is going pretty even right now. TA slightly up right now. About four or five CS. I think that's sort of expected as uh, Chu's getting low. Oh, His he Earth is Spirit is die. dead. Did he? I heard a south. I heard a south too. He south? I didn't see it, but I heard something. Oh, my face. Hope that didn't happen.
But the Death Prophet versus TA matchup, like, we do, we're talking about the laning phase, but there's a lot of good things to say about Death Prophet, as well as TA in this matchup going later on to the mid game, right? Dark, gonna be in trouble here, got rolled on, kicked. But uh, again, mana. he's got boots, and so does Chu, and there's no Orb of Venom to make the difference here. So Chu... Got to roll in one second, though. Is going to struggle to be able to catch him. The roll does actually land dark. Tried to juke it, but it's still not enough damage. Wow. And this, folks, is why you have Orb of Venom, because you would have you would have gotten the kill. Well, it keeps on going for like the, the boots first, and I can kind of see it. Mm -hmm. It's just the fact that dark also has an early set of boots, so... Toss up in the air. Misha, once again, the tanky support is going to survive long enough to be able to get off his arsenal of spells. But this time around, it's looking a lot more difficult for Crystallize to be able to get that counter kill. He can't even try for it. Magical's going to be run out underneath the tier one tower. Doesn't die to the Crypt Swarm, though. And will be able to reset the five minute bounty runes. It's going to be snagged up by Dark. Once again, Keen Gaming get three, nice. but it costs them Dark's life. With the crits. So they've gotten six out of eight now? Indeed. Not bad, not bad. Maybe that's Bounty part rune of the gold. reason. Did you see that? By 1350 versus 450. That's pretty massive. Thank you for yep. putting that up for me again, JJ. And that is exactly how much the Skelly up. Bros. Get him. Crystallize. Wisely cutting through the trees. He's going to reveal Kaka, who's trying to get a healing salve off. And there's a cancel that healing salve, but it looks like maybe just enough regen here for Kaka to be able to get back until he's hit by another Rayfire Blast. But that toss in may actually get the kill on Crystallize, but he de aggroed so well that Crystallize will actually survive here unless a toss. He just needs the vision, but he doesn't have it. <laughs> that toss also kind of got Kaka killed. Yeah, kind of. It was like a high, high risk, high reward play that he went for there. The TA trap may oh, actually, it's to gonna Venom. spoil. It's gonna spoil this entire gank. So they're just gonna lay out sentries for this Death Prophet. It's it's like that weird support rotation you have to do only against a TA. Mm -hmm. You have to, to get the sentry once TA gets level six. Otherwise your mid just- And you have to protect it too. It's gonna feed. To make sure that TA doesn't just like insta de order for whatever reason. Right. That's like the disaster situation that I've been in before. Because let me tell you, they will not buy another sentry for you. <laughs> it's a one-size-fits-all situation here. One and done. Dude, the production is so cool, though. I'm not even just saying that. Guys, I don't get paid to shield Lay Earth, but it's pretty dope. Look at that. Okay. And a DD rune on Earth Spirit. You can see below him. Oh, look at that little cute little heart JJ made. I thought that was a poorly drawn line, but... Man, even 1v2, this Urs is just taking all. Oh, look at this pullback, magical. There is all those physical instances of damage against the refraction, but unfortunately, they didn't have another stun. The avalanche was a bit too late. But they did at least get magical low, so maybe they can pressure this mid tier one tower. The supports are going to stick around here to make sure that they enable this Death Prophet to keep going. Magical had a healing salve, though. He just needs some help from his allies to make sure his mid tower doesn't die like this. Blitz, I know you hate to see this happen. I really hate to see this happen. It's a lot of damage that they're taking on the mid. He's going to try and pull some of the creeps off the tower, and the exorcism is going to fade away here. Keen Gaming. I feel like that tower is just a little bit too tanky for them to go for this. And I like that old 11 made the rotation, though. He pretty much took the tower for them. Yeah. Just his mere presence alone kind of forced Magical back. Didn't allow him to be able to pull the creep wave off the tower, and as a result, they got the full exorcism on that tier one. Still not enough to kill it, though. Apparently, that's just not enough damage. CS is looking pretty even. The only one who really stands out who's a step behind is our Brewmaster, the offlane for Na'Vi. Just uh, a little bit harder, and yeah, he's faced up against an Ursa. It was double melee versus an Ursa. Yeah, not really going to be able to do too much with this. Poor guy. Look at how Chick is just like, ah, maybe I'm going to run at you, maybe I'm not. Blizzy always has to second guess himself if the Earth Spirit is not right next to him. <laughs> and has to speed boost himself away sometimes. Wiggity wiggity out. Another round of sentries for the mid lane. You can't play mid against TA without sentries. The traps just do too much damage. Especially in a hero like this. So the toss just straight up in the air. A lot of damage on a crystallized. Very surprised that old 11 actually went on the Wraith King at all. But yeah, there's uh, 
mean, there's no way that you're gonna kill, and it's important for you to keep that mana. Yeah. He will at least be able to force out the skeletons from the Wraith King, and we'll be able to get some of that net worth. Oh, we're gonna have our first rotation. Oh, never mind. I thought the Ursa was uh, gonna go up to top lane and do an invasion or something. He just TP back to base. So instead, it's gonna be the Exorcism popped at mid. Once again, we're gonna have our supports rotate over, make sure the tower does indeed die. Uh, Why do you think he got fully out of there at bottom? Just uh, like nobody's showing at mid, right? Yeah. If you're pressuring a mid tower, like there's gotta be, Navi's should be doing something in return, right? If they're not defending a tower. You see, I knew the answer to that, but I wanted to test you. Ah, you pulled the cap. You did pass. That was Thank you. exactly right. So oftentimes, like, what ends up happening, the worst thing is when you go for a smoke ink of your own and your carry just sits in the lane and he gets ganked at the same time and then it becomes like a net neutral. Yeah. That's the worst thing that can happen. So for the Ursa to fully back out in that situation, even though he doesn't have to, it's because his team's being greedy by taking mid and him showing on the map. For him to get gone on and die at that point, like, you wouldn't feel that bad for Na'Vi making that trade, because that mid-tower was most likely being taken with the next exorcism anyways. Right. So at least in this case, you don't lose anything further. It's one of those like really disciplined plays that'll separate like mediocre carries. Because a lot of carries, I think he learned from game one where he just stayed bottom all the time, mm -hmm. got jumped on, died. You can't be there at a certain point in that game, because you, your team just doesn't really want to ward for you. They can't really get a lane ward down for you. It's hard for your supports to like, your supports, if they make the rotation all the way down towards bottom, they place a ward, they have to leave. There's nothing for them there. They're not getting any more kills, they can't pull. Like, you want to be more active on the map, try to help out mid. Old chicken. Being helped out by his bro, Old Eleven, who just tanks the creep wave, uh, or the Roshan, rather, entirely, allowing Old Chicken to be able to build up that damage. And, again, they kind of showed the Death Prophet at top lane, so... Seem like Navi, they made the natural, okay, you're gonna take our safe lane tower, we're gonna head bottom, but surprise, King Gaming, they had levels to this strategy. They say you're gonna go to the bottom lane, that's exactly where we want you to be, because that's the farthest position away from the Roshan pit you could be. Yeah, that's a cool move. I mean, Keen's actually, the, the map rotations and the way that like their cores are moving, really, really good right now. Like, Old Chicken's playing this game really sick. Yeah. And uh, like, you gotta appreciate like, the moves and like the mentality behind stuff like that like his rotation out of the bottom lane then to go mid get control force the ta out which then forces navi to say oh there's an ursa mid let's just run at bottom and then he anticipates that move and instead he goes to the roshan it's like always thinking a step ahead always making like the next play which he's doing right now is he's going to try to go on amisha who's most likely dead ta trap is just not going to slow him enough especially with the enrage oh now uh now rubik has got ta traps Oh, hype. That's actually such a sick steal. You don't even need to, to use them ever. You can just lay them down as uh, little wards. Yeah. That's what uh, TAs do all the time. What I'd love for it, uh, what I'd love for the Rubik to do is just. Oh, this is questionable. I can't believe Keen is doing something like this. Exodus is pretty much all by himself, and sure enough, Navi, they're just gonna try and swarm in, beat down this Death Prophet as quick as possible, and they will oh, be able to do dead. so. And now with the Death Prophet gone and Blizzy having used the ultimate, they're just gonna try and catch for more. Blizzy is gonna run that Storm Panda out. They're gonna be able to go on the tiny. Oh, while Chicken is actually gonna turn and see if he can maybe fight this, trying to protect all the eleven as much as possible. Got an Aegis. Starts playing some damage on a magical but oh what nice a beautiful that is a sick static storm crystallized gonna lose his first life and magical is gonna lose his only life if 11 has any more damage but he's actually limping away their support see it though will be able to finish him off and crystallize he comes right back in to his doom there's nothing he can do to get and out of here glimpse, and the finish them all execute you as well what a big turnaround from keen navi they just got greedy they thought this was going to be their big turnaround getting the kill on the death prophet and trying to catch more but they forgot keen is still much stronger than them especially with that aegis i could hear all the keen gaming members like shouting yeah in the back like they're getting hyped they knew they were going to stomp that fight they saw their ursa rock up with his aegis they know that he's the strongest here in the game they blew a lot just to kill uh that death prophet once Blizzy's ult was out, like there was almost no way that they were gonna win that fight as oh, with nice. this ward. That's such a good ward. Dark, I'm, I apologize for everything I said about game two. This guy is this sick guy's good. disruptor. This guy's real good. It's one of my favorite things is laying down uh, good wards. Yeah. Flips.
the ward vision the, the that they have is important. and the movement that Keen's doing right now is yeah. so high level. It's it's really just good to watch. They're playing around their ward vision. They're making consistently aggressive moves. They're enabling both their supports, which, you know, if you ever play pub games where, you know, you don't really know what to do as a support, just playing your cores because, you know, they're not enabling you. They're not making life easy for you. But in this game, it's like a symbiotic relationship. The supports are making it easier for the cores to get pickoffs. They're pulling old chicken around the map, making it easy for him to just get, like, these solo kills and win team fights. The support's rotating into mid, and old 11 doing the same. Like, like look at bottom right now. Crystallize, they know he doesn't have ults. And Dark's gonna set this up. Oh, They're trying to again. split. He's just trying to work his way over to Crystallize. He wants this big core kill, but instead, he's just gonna have to accept Misha's death instead. Man. At least he saved Crystallize. Yeah. That should have been most likely a kill. I mean, he saved Crystallize. It was a heavy rotation. And on top of that, Magical actually had uh, an illusion rune. So he cut the mid wave as well. Man, this is so disappointing. Especially, like, considering how well Navi played in game number one. Mm -hmm. Like, that Navi is like, wow. That's, that's insane. Like, the pace at which they're playing. Clean movement. And, you know, it's just like, let's pick TA three games in a row. Let's get it, boys. And they're just getting absolutely crushed right now. How the times have changed. Blitz Dota, Navi fan. Dude, I'm actually okay. Like, I can respect their first game. Their second and third game, it's not going as well. I mean, I the could still see- The first game was super sick. Yeah. It's just it was really, game. it was really well done by them. I could see them still winning this game. I don't think it's as bad as last game where it was just done at like, yeah. you know, 10 minutes in. I was like, all right, well, let's, uh, let's run this one back. I mean, for me, it feels like Keen got a really good read of what Navi does right yeah. in that game one, and they're just like, we know how to play. We know how to play both the draft as well as the strategy inside of the game to be able to stop that kind of play. The unfortunate thing is, like, TA and Wraith King aren't heroes that, like, that you traditionally think of as these, like, ultra late game beasts either. Yeah. There's, like, Death Prophet. Uh, I mean, Ursa isn't either, but, like, DP is going to scale really well. And I could still see Na'Vi winning this. It's just not very easy. For sure. Especially if the pickoffs just, just oh, that, continue. That glimpse actually helped him. Yeah, it kind of did. But get the ward! Get the ring! Oh, oh no! God. Dark denied it! Dark denied even the ward! Dark, you dick. <laughs> you can't... Come on, man. I mean, that was such a sick play by both supports, because Misha, may, he, like, he knows the ward is placed because of the yeah. glimpse, right? Oh, man. Whoa, Blizzy. Blizzy. Oh, oh, never mind. He's got a haste rune. Wait, no, you're playing against a disruptor. A haste rune may not... He's got. he's got. He's chill. Relax. For whatever reason, he's chill. I, I, I think once he missed the uh, static field, they don't have yeah. a stun follow-up. That's true. They can't burst him down from there. <laughs> yeah, Tiny was nowhere nearby, so... I will say, the, uh, the newest skeletons, I hated them a lot, but they are really good for that situation of split pushing. They're so good at being able to use the split. All right, I want to take this fight. Once again, gets in the position for a good primal split, but can Navi actually win this fight? Kaka is going to be in some trouble here. The toss up on the uh, Death Prophet. Now they toss him back down, but they need to be able to focus him, but they just don't have the damage to instantly burst him down. He's staying alive a little bit longer. That's so much damage coming out. Finally, it does end up going down, but Old Chicken is still going to be trying to carry out the rest of this team fight. But he gets caught up. The BKB is now worn out, and he's just going to get kited around Pop Team Rage. Kills one, turns around, trying to finish off Chris Lice. But look at that, our armlet toggling too. The glimpse back, they're just trying to protect Old Chicken at this point in time. But Chu, Double he's not going to let him get away. He keeps on getting the boulder onto each one of these heroes. Slow down the two. Dark, he's going to get hit by the Ray Fire Blast, which should take him out, especially with Chu. The slow he's roll! Onto it, but the slow roll wasn't enough. Now he's going to get tossed back into oh. another level. He doesn't get dark. The support battle continues. Uh. Oh, they almost took bottom. They did. What Dude, the that's way. what I'm talking about. The Wraith King skeletons are so good They're right autonomous, now. man. They're pushing. They just do their thing. Because if you think about it, right, they're, they're like worse for a lot of situations, but the fact that they die and come back means that they actually tank towers yeah. even better than before. Dude, the homies just rolled up. Yeah, the homies don't stop. They almost just... Look at Misha. 10,000 oh, IQ. That tower. Get that tower, baby. All in. Wait, oh, no, it does oh, nothing. It does nothing. Oh, no. 100 IQ play. 100 oh, IQ Oh, God, play. Misha, get out of there. Get out of there, buddy. Oh, my God. He thought it was one shot of all. So did we. 
how wrong we were. Nisha thought he had a real wrinkly brain, but that was that was all smooth right there. 196 Damn. gold he just fed for no reason. Oh boy. Oh my god, I can't believe that happened. <laughs> I was like, what is he doing with that invis? Is he gonna like drop like a sneaky ward? Oh, he's going up for it. I mean, it would have been so sick too. The tier three bounty gold, open up shrines. Like what a difference what? that could have made. All right, let me just, uh, let me, I really want to read chat for this, but let's just pop up. That Jakiro has level one liquid fire and has 79 base damage. Oh no, Kaka, he stole ice path from that too. So not only oh my God, did he, he got him kill killed himself as well. on the tier three, he got you killed as well. Oh my lord. That's like, that is like the worst double dip karma I've ever seen in my life. Dude, he, my guy had a raindrop and level one liquid fire. He confidently walked up that hill. Oh, you know what is gonna happen as a result of that pickoff? They're also gonna get more bounty runes. Because now Keen owned the top part of the map. Navi is gonna try and head to bottom instead, but they're already set up. So Keen is and gonna the get the snowball three. effect is real. Oh, Jesus. Dude, that's actually one of <laughs> We're gonna get the instant replay of Misha. Boys to Look at the instant pings. What did it go down How to? How surprised? It got down to like 26 or something. How surprised do you think he was like that when it didn't die? He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> It was at that moment. Oh my god, and then the liquid fires <sighs> into the bounty runes. Okay, just wait you know for the next row shot, is? though. What? I think there's uh, there's this weird backdoor interaction where sometimes it doesn't take uh, account for damage over time. So what I'm saying is, he actually did do like six damage to the tower permanent. So if he does that like five more times, Blitz, he will get that tower. Indeed, indeed. All right, so... You saw that Na'Vi doesn't get stomped in five on fives though. They like Blizzy's ult plus the Wraith King just running at you is really tanky. Yeah. Like, that that's how you win this game, is you just have three cores that are sort of hard to take down, and eventually you just outlast them in a team fight. Like you see that uh Yee's build. I mean deciding to go for the holy locket. By the way, I don't think so. Uh, I thought, like, wouldn't it just be better, like, even just a Ghost Scepter? Like, the biggest threat has got to be the TA and his burst physical yeah, damage. Yeah, if he right? lives in that fight for, like, 10 seconds longer, they're going to win that fight. The fact that he just keeps getting bursted down... It's all good, though. Because the next Roshan is going to be the... Uh, the big one, anyways. I mean, it's cool, like, just because of the fact that we never see Holy Locket. It's mm -hmm. kind of like a garbage item, except for, like, Timber Saws. Timber sauce we're getting it because of all the regen. I mean, I'd still prefer other items like greaves or something. Yeah. Uh, that was so good. Roshan number two, Misha, is wise to what's happening right now. But can they actually take this fight? It's going to be another attempt here for Navi. Oh, that is going to be a stolen macro pyre. Another great uh, ability for a Rubik to have. Because he's got to disable to make sure you sit in that macro pyre for as long as possible. Plus, doesn't it just last forever because of Rubik's uh, passive? Yeah. Here we go. Smoked up. They want to take a fight and go into Roshan. The best part They're is... They're going to run into Crystallize, and that is not the best hero to be able to initiate on. He's got that reincarnation. They're going to try and deal with him as quick as possible. They can get rid of the first one. It's so easy. Line, but Chu is going to be able to get a nice roll into the back line, try and get onto Kaka. Static Blitz Storm whiffs. Him. The Static Storm is going to whiff completely, and Dark doesn't really get the lock that he was looking for, but the fight is split enough that they could just turn, focus on Chu. Now they can go for Blizzy as well. Kaka, who's managed to steal the clap, is trying to run away from Blizzy. He's, oh, he's just out of range. The kinetic field holds in Blitz. Get clapped, oh, don't Kaka. get clapped. Kaka, get out of there. Come on, Kaka. But they're going to get the Roshan with the Exorcism committal. What happened? It looked like Na'Vi just didn't want to commit anymore at a certain point. Uh, I think the problem was that once Crystallize, it's okay. Like, the weird part about Wraith King is you want your ulti to pop in the middle of the fight. That's like the, that's the morale breaker. Yeah. But having it pop that early just means you're going to die again real quickly. Like, what you want is to be able to get into these 5v5s where it's hectic and you can't really focus the Wraith King, mm -hmm. and he just continues to run at you. He throws, like, three or four stuns out. <laughs> like, how JJ just goes back to that tier 3 real down. quick. I mean, there is a big creep wave pushing if uh, Keen don't stop these this monster army of range creeps. And that's where he comes in. He's got cheese now and a BKB. Now I'm, I'm liking his build. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I really like the value buckler. I think that's a really cool oh. idea. But 11 is 99% dead here. What? What's he doing? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's not the position to be in. Kaka! Oh. Close call, close call. You know, I, I've already had a lot of fun with Misha, but I will say he could have thrown that ice pad a little bit sooner. It's okay. Dude, Misha's actually had a pretty good series. He has. I mean, we're making fun of him because of that bottom play, but that was, for me, he did that for, like, the pure entertainment for the crowd. That was a crowd move. What, my guy lost 196 gold and his Earth Spirit died? So what? I mean, he did also have the sickest player interview that I've heard in a What did he say? I mean, he was just, like, super straightforward about everything. He, uh, like, Slack's tried to set up, like, uh, so Slack does this sometimes, just to let you guys know. He'll just make up things. Oh, the analysts say this to, yeah. to try and get, uh, to pose a question to the player. So he said, like, oh, the analysts say that, uh, you know, you guys needed a little bit of time to, to pick up or something like that. And, uh, Misha's, Misha's like, no, that's bullshit. We just drafted a garbage draft and played like shit. <laughs> He's like, oh, wow, shit. I, I, I love a straightforward answer like that. Give me the real deal, Misha. You want to know my favorite Slex play? Is when he... I guess I shouldn't say this out loud because it'll kind of blow up his spot. Mm. But he'll at all the stats people <laughs> Twitter arguments. <laughs> he'll intentionally say something stupid. He'll add like Nahaz, Scant, and Skim. Oxville. And then he'll just go AFK for like three hours and then come back to see what he... See what happened. The kind of destruction he's wrought is they're all just arguing amongst each other. So they're going to grab the uh, tier 2 tower with this. And with Aegis Cheese, they could go high ground with their exorcism. They've taken all the outer tier 1s and tier 2s. Yeah. Like, I, I think this is actually a pretty great move by them. Dude, especially with this timing where the tier 2 is still very healthy. You know Magical wants to stick around for this. Yeah, this is... I mean, he's going to come in for this, but they actually needed, like, TA traps or something. No, the way he's just going to keep going. He's saying they use the glyph. We have Wraith King skeletons. I don't really want to fight them. Well, let's just keep going. Yeah, I think this is actually the correct play, considering they're not going to win a 5-on-5 five five engagement right now. Uh -huh. And being able to trade like this isn't bad. This is going to force Keen is entirely the back actually going to die? Oh, boy, they can catch at least one here. Kaka. That was a great play by Magical. Yeah. Unfortunately... That was the best situation. Oh, BKB activated. He's going to turn and try and kill. Dark goes for the TP out. He should have given himself enough time, and yeah, he easily did. That was great. That was actually... They're going to maybe outlast Aegis for this, too. Oh, man. That actually would have been such a world of difference if the Wraith King had just a little bit more experience. He just picked up his level 15, and that talent is plus 35 skeleton damage. Mm. If that, if those skeletons had each had an extra 35 damage, that tier 3 would have been done for, and they probably would have gotten some damage on, like, the range racks. Abyssal Blade being built by Old Chicken right now, and he's very close to it. All he needs is the recipe, because he already has the Basher and Vanguard. Uh, meanwhile, Crystallize building into an AC as his third item. Like it a lot. Just pure armor. Just need a tank. You need to outlast in fights to be able to win fights. Right now, is this going to make a move? Is Old Not Eleven's in here? They're... It's going to be pulled back, trying to get off his own. Silence. Island. It's going to be silenced by the Death Prophet. That's pretty huge. They can at least try to force buyback here, potentially. When you force buyback here, Crystallize has to jump the backline almost immediately. Like, that's how you do this. So who, that who does he blow up? Uh, I'm not sure. Go for Could maybe Rubik, go for... Disruptor. Yeah, probably just try to grab the supports out. Dude, but look at this. Dark has three bracers. He has 1,800 HP. That's not a sad raptor. No. Let's go, skeleton boys. Form up. Form Voltron. Oh, back door protection is back up. How many has he got? He's got five charges? Yeah, he needs. he needs some more. I feel like that's that's one of the hardest um, parts. When you run Wraith King, you don't have Radiance. You just don't farm creeps as fast. And so as a result, you just don't get skeleton charges as fast, and that hurts your farm, and it just kind of like is a, a snowball effect against you. But you got to go for the AC this game. The armor is too good. What a, What is this? Are Navi like trying to call Keen Gaming's bluff? Okay. They're trying to see if they'd actually go high ground mid. That is 
This is the easiest high ground I've ever seen. And old chicken's like, this is a weird thing. They're probably wrapping around on it. So he positioned himself on the high ground. That forces King, or uh, Navi, excuse me, all the way around. And by the time they actually get here, the barracks is almost dead, but so is the death oh, roll. What? They managed to get him so quickly. That first damage feature in the back line does survive against they gotta the get out now. initiation. And now Kinetic Field trying to block all these heroes to see if they can get out. Kaka goes for a very optimistic TP, doesn't make it away. And Dark, he's going to be hunted down by Blizzy as got 11 oh. 2. This is a 4 for nothing. And it all comes down to Yi being way too far forward from the rest of his team. Yeah. I think if you just back out for like half a second, let your Ursa come in with his BKB, he probably just thought he was unkillable uh, due to the items that he has. He's got like Locket Cheese, right? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing about the, the Locket build, right? It's the fact that if you don't actually, if they just get an initiation on you and blow you up, the Locket doesn't do anything. You actually need to have a Spirit Siphon going. Wow, Keen is, I, they got to this point being really disciplined, and now it just feels like E especially is kind of just doing his own thing. Yeah. And it's really hurting his team. 30 minute bounty runes, Crystallize, who has a reincarnation oh, here. A BKB was pop for this. BKB for this, old chicken is really trying to push this one. We'll be able to take Din down. Okay, but then you have a Death Prophet with no exorcism. They're going to pop another BKB now. They're, okay, they do manage to get a sentry out and catch out Blizzy here, potentially. Do they have the sounds to be able to control him? Blizzy's trying to walk back with that BKB still activated on the Death Prophet. It looks like they should be able to get him, but they're they've already lost the Ursa as well as the Disruptor. Death Prophet's just got to get out of here. Old Eleven's definitely dead. Nice ice, ice path. What a beautiful ice path. The follow-up roll in from Keisha's Drew. revenge. What is going on with Keen he, Gaming? Why did he... He popped BKB to go on a Wraith King. A Wraith King. And he knows has ulti. What was the point of all that? I'm not don't sure. don't have exorcism. And when they sat on top of him, they don't have a way to cancel his blink. He was even late to blink, by the way. He had it up yeah. after the reincarnate, and he was like late blink, but he's like, oh, I'm, I guess I'm just gone. And then Magical comes in with a DDTA, and all of a sudden their entire team is forced into a fight. It feels like Keen is like, this game's over, and they keep trying to force it. Yeah. Like, when they went back for Magical, who was hitting their Tier 3, and they just sort of split up, they got picked off on two heroes, yeah. then they tried to go for the high ground at bottom lane, they got picked off as four, and whatever that just was. Like, Na'Vi's just being gifted away back into this game by Keen. Keen, you're still ahead. You don't have to tilt at this point. You're still really significantly... Uh, what is it like? One K? <laughs> not significant anymore. <laughs> yeah, not significant anymore. That that oh, they, uh, they just over, lost their tier three two. Over ten thousand gold lead. That's now gone. Dang. And look at that. Navi were in position. They're like, ah, oh, the siege wagons will handle it. So they immediately take a shrine off of that tier three die. Uh, the kick is gonna land. Oh, it hits. barely gets him. That it's was gold. the last half second for sure. Is that the uh, net worth lead change? <laughs> yup. That is. I can't even believe that this is happening right now. And the all chat, Chew, he's feeling it. Oh, well, It Navi feels so Chew good being in this it. position when you were so far behind and you didn't really have moves to make. Yeah. You've got a Wraith King TA cores and all of a sudden, like they just gift you two fights in a row. You going through a drought and Keen Gaming just rain some gold down on you and next thing you know, all the supports have items, the cores are looking at their luxury items now. Look at that. They're gonna have a uh, butterfly being built for the Templar Assassin. What's, uh, what do we got for Crystallize? He's got his AC and what is he thinking about building? No, oh, nothing. He's got no gold. Oh, BKB. He's got BKB on the courier on his way. I was about he's to say, so he's, like, he's his, gotta have another his item. His item progression is great now. Yeah. Like he, it was, He's just like getting item after item within like the four minute mark. Just like yeah. pick up gold, pick up gold, pick up gold. I mean, once they have the damage, then they just need a BKB and they can just run at this Death Prophet every single fight because there's no BKB piercing disables. I don't right? know how much I love the Holy Locket. <laughs> I feel like if he has something like a Yule's to like reset himself. I mean, again, it's like if the damage was slower, but you're, you're facing up against a TA, that's, that's like the back and forth of Death Prophet TA. Death Prophet has ways to be able to break through your refraction, but TA has the burst damage that's hard for Death Prophet. Even getting something like an Aeon Disc at this point, I yeah. don't think I would hate. Oh, I would love an Aeon Disc. Yeah, I like think that'd be... You would never get bursted. You'd almost always be able to pop your BKB and get like three Spirit Siphons off because of the uh, nature of Navi's cores being like so melee bases. Oh no, old 11. 
he gets caught here. I love the fact that, by the way, when Crystallize blinked in, he attacked rather yeah. than trying to go for the Wraith Fire Blast. He needed the instant damage to prevent Because he knew them. that Chu was going to follow up with the stun anyways. Yeah. All you got to do is just prevent the blink away. Now they've just got Shrines to clear out. Old chicken left KFC for this. <laughs> so bad as good. Uh, right. yeah, that one's legit. Yeah, that's, a, that's a good one. That's a good one. That, I like that. Uh, Dolan Super Mita 20. Yeah, I'll give you the card. That was good. Now there's somebody else in chat who's real upset because he said it first. It's okay. I don't even know what's going on. Like All of a sudden I see a Jakiro hitting a tier 3 tower at bottom and Misha's just like done. <laughs> and then Keen just like, I thought it was a free Rax at bottom, but then I didn't anticipate how quickly they were just gonna like straight up burst them. And let me tell you, neither did he, because they had full vision the entire time. Mind you, it wasn't like Navi smoked back into their base. Like, yeah, they careful. saw like, them run back through mid. Oh no. You could no. literally give a timer to Death Prop and say, they're gonna be on top of you in five, four, three, you know? Glimpse back, trying to get the space to get away. They'll be okay. Another BKB, very important one at that. Blizzy was kind of having a tough game. I mean, it's it's hard against Disruptor to play Brewmaster. You're either going to be forced into an ultimate to dodge Glimpse, or you're going to get pulled back in a static store. Now he doesn't have to worry about that with his fresh 10-second BKB. Dude, I... This is a comeback. I'm actually so hyped for this. I can't even believe, like, that bottom play when they made, when they just went on the Wraith King, they were still up like 7k gold there. Oh, the 11. Okay. He's going to make the initiation and tank it with his face. He is mega dead as Misha's revenge. <laughs> what the hell is that? I don't know. It Somebody on the team like, guys, do you know where they at? Oh, the 11. I got this. <laughs> you guys want to know where they're at? <laughs> I'll show you where they're at. It's 5,000 gold now, dude. This is like a 20,000 like swing total. And it's another tier three. Oh and my. range racks. Oh my word. And a melee racks. This is a collapse if I've ever seen one. Like, yes, Navi played well to like come back into this and they took advantage of stuff, but... Telekinesis into Ray Fire Blast. Old Chicken's gonna be able to get the Basher and Bissell Blade lock him down. Can they actually finish up this Aegis? Reminder, it's still just an Aegis, so Keen Gaming cannot overextend themselves here. That's why they're gonna back up at the first sign of trouble. Okay, so now they're gonna take their time. Just back out a little bit. It looks like because they have such a long time on the Aegis, they don't want to rush things too much. Yeah. I mean, they could just build more and more of an advantage at this point, right? I think with like a minute and a half left to go, you probably go for it. Yeah. That's probably the ideal timing of this. Oh, event. your locket doesn't protect you against this! Come on, man, you he need an this conversation! He's got it queued up. I think he realizes he's like, man, my item build is garbage. Like, literally nothing I have does anything. Oh my lord. He, come on. Okay, the stolen ice path from Kaka will give them a window to initiate on the Templar Assassin. Once again, they're gonna try and burn this Aegis as best as possible. Magical, this time will lose it. The buyback comes out from the Death Prophet. They know, especially with another ice path, That's they're actually the opportunity for this one. They're gonna be able to get on top of these heroes. No exorcism, the exorcism is actually out and doing some decent damage, but he's gotta stay away from this Templar Assassin. Oh, the ice path, it's gonna be able to save Yi for a little bit longer. Can he actually get out? Can he kill the TA? The glimpse back pulls him out, but a whack with a big crit knocks down the Death Prophet. Ursus is now going to be forced into a buyback as well. A two-man ice path. Kaka just keeps laying it down, but his cores, they can't follow up. They didn't have the damage. They're dying left and right, and it looks like Navi at this point, with 80 seconds left on a death profit, they're just going to wipe through the entire base. Looks like they passed the cheese to Magical as well. And you've got two salves on Amisha. He's anticipating. They're going to stick around. If anybody takes too much damage, he'll heal them up. No problem. Somehow Keen are gonna have to poke and poke and poke and get some sort of beautiful initiation. Old Eleven's gotta get a, like a, some sort of sick toss back to stop this one. And he's That's gonna go for do. it. The Templar says him instant blink. blink. Nice play, a beautiful ice path once again to try and protect Old Eleven. Glimmer Cape will help him out, but Navi, you gotta fight before Megas. Hero kills anymore. They can just go for the Megas at this point. Two, almost getting bursted down by Move that Ursa. They're gonna be able to focus on that range racks. That's gonna be the Megas at this point. 
Keen Gaming, you can try and face up against Megas if you want, but this is looking like it's a fight you honestly can't win. The Reincarnation, round one, is going to be down BKB. They're both going to pop it and just turn and fight against each other. But the help of Magical, oh, toss nice again, toss and the blink. the blink again. They just don't have that instant disable to be able to stop him from getting some distance away. The pullback of the glimpse is going to be denied by the BKB. So well done for Navi in that fight. Just real disciplined, good mechanical skill overall. Nobody really overextended. They kept their presence. They stayed together. They were a unit. They didn't leave anybody behind. Magical gets out like four different times. Two times by the blink. Three times by the blink. One times by the BKB. They pass on the cheese so they could sustain their push going down to mid. They used their Aegis brilliantly. They blew up this Death Prophet. They like juggled the hell out of her. Dude. Wow. I... Dark and Kaka work so hard to keep yeah, Death Prophet this... alive. And E's builds really, really hurt them this game. Like, I know you like the buckler and it is value, but why not just get, instead of like all of these items that don't do anything for you, like this holy locket, this plate mail, uh, this buckler, like if you just simply have an Aeon disc plus like one other defensive item, you can't die this game. Or at least you'll, he's like never able to get off his BKB in these yeah. engagements. It's still seven seconds and he's had it for like 15 plus minutes. Yeah. Even like the classic Gil Scepter Death Prophet. Would it would be missed. enough. But instead, uh, they're in this position. That bottom fight was really the tipping point because the game was still salvageable after that disastrous bottom one where they lost four heroes. Yeah. Then uh, Old Chicken just kind of ran in, died. They like furthered that bleeding. They gave up Roshan and then it just snowballed so quickly. And for Keen, this has to be, I mean, what's our win probability difference? <sighs> that is, uh... It's like the graph is trying to dump below 100%. It's trying real hard to go to 101. As the Bruce Blake comes in, they're just trying to hold the TA back at this point. They're filtering right. it. Oh, what? A four staff denies the toss back there of the tiny. And now with the spirit vessel on him as well as Blizzy. And okay, that's gonna be the right king losing his first life. It looks like old chicken didn't have to commit too much for that one. Now he's gonna pop his BKB for the second life. Our death prophet's trying to get in there with the spirit siphon. Now the extra system going out, but old chicken is gonna run out of HP soon as the enrage is about to fade off and magical makes short work of him. And at this point, he isn't even being targeted and he's not doing anything to Navi. And I hear Navi. the Navi claps. They are so 